Hello, it's Caroline at Movement Style. This is a video about Pilates and in particular a close-up on the single leg stretch exercise, one of the original Pilates exercises. The single leg stretch exercise is in many respects a compound exercise. It's made up of the head hold with integrated abdominal strength, the knee float or knee fold exercise, and also the leg press or leg stretch part of the movement. As with nearly all the Pilates exercises, we'll be working in the neutral spine position. And single leg stretch exercise is one of those practices where we need to have a very strong sense as we're working of the spine lengthening. It's in the neutral spine position and it's stabilized within the neutral spine position, but it's a dynamic neutral spine that lengthens and responds to the activity of the movement. Because although, of course, we lie on the floor a lot of the time to perform our Pilates exercises, we're not practicing for moving around lying on the floor. We're practicing for moving around in an upright position and maybe for some dynamic movements with dynamic extensions. And when we really think about the spine in a dynamic way when we're lying on the mat, that will help our Pilates to convert more into our practical experience of moving when we're up and engaged with some more um, active uh, form of uh, exercise. This video will pretty much assume that you as the viewer are already familiar with the neutral spine position, with the lateral breathing that works with Pilates. Um, and I have in my Introduction to Pilates series play playlist uh, videos that cover neutral spine, lateral breathing and engaging the core strength around the waist and in the lower abdomen. So if you're not sure, always check back to those videos for some extra advice. All of that having been said, let's come down onto the mat and we're going to just quickly think about the neutral spine, of course, so that we know where it is. And then we'll just quickly think about our abdominal strength around the waist and in the lower abdomen and then begin practicing moving through towards the single leg stretch exercise. So we'll practice each of the compound parts of the exercise and then we'll do the whole exercise. So let's to prepare lift the hips up and then just let the weight of the pelvis come through to the mat, balancing the weight out right side, left side. Let's lift the ribs up, stretch the waist out of the hips and bring the ribs down towards the mat, balancing the weight out right side, left side. Let's support the head with the hands and release the neck from between the shoulder blades, lengthening it out towards the crown of the head, bringing it down in a centered position and then allowing the arms to extend by the sides broadening out across the collarbones, relaxing between the shoulder blades and the rib cage, so that we're in an easy position through the upper back. We can then align the legs by bringing the insteps together and then swiveling the feet on the heels so the toes turn out a little and then bringing the heels in line with the toes. Our neutral spine position here will be with the base of the tailbone directed as if to between the heels. So if you imagined a little spotlight on your tailbone, it will be shining to between your heels. The crests of the hip bones directly up towards the ceiling. So again, little headlights on our hip bones. We're shining straight up, not off at an angle, but straight up. So pubic bone and crests of hip bones will be level. And then there should be a little bit of space between the spine and the floor in the back of the waist. So not letting the small of the back rest into the mat, in other words. The spine through the back of the rib cage, as much of it as possible, should be in contact with the mat. The back of the neck long and released in that fist distance between the chin and the chest, front of the chin, level to the ceiling above us. So we're going to think about the lateral breathing to help us engage the strength in the waist. Just allowing the breath as it passes through the nostrils to create space from the inside through the nostrils, opening space at the back of the mouth, from the inside, the breath opening space within the throat, from the inside, the breath open space between the breastbone and the spine, allowing the breath to open space out to the sides of your chest and right down into the region of the floating ribs and back towards the spine in the floating ribs. And with the exhalations, a 
allowing the breath to leave the body in a long, strong exhalation. Breath can be through the nostrils, back of mouth, throat, upper chest, mid chest, depth of chest. And this strong, long exhalation, nostrils, then the back of the mouth, the throat, upper chest, mid chest, depth of chest, helps us to really feel the rib cage tapering in towards the spine and the muscles deep within the waist from the inside also automatically begin to engage towards the spine. And just allowing the sense of the muscles very deep within the waist, very deep line core strength muscles to pull in towards the spine at the back of the waist, the sides and the front, as if we had a belt fastening firmly around the waist, the belt cinching in from behind, pulling us in from behind like a corset, breath by breath. And if you imagine that your belt has 10 notches or 10 holes, you're fastening in as deeply and as strongly as you can go, just checking in that your legs stay relaxed, your gluteal muscles and hip joints stay relaxed. And then let's say you've got through to that 10th notch on the belt, Keep working really deeply, but just relax your strength back so that you're working on that eighth notch, eighth notch of the belt. So strong, but not too hard that you can't sustain it. So now then in the lower abdomen, we can just create the pelvic diamond, thumbs coming together, index fingers coming together. You can place the thumbs onto the navel, index fingers towards the pubic bone, heels of the hands resting on the crest of the hip bones. And the idea then is to draw down and back through the broad and wide part of the lower abdomen, pulling away from the heels of the hands, really deep down, and then drawing back and away from the navel and the index fingers. So you get a nice hollowing out of the muscles in the lower abdomen. And just checking in at the same time that your legs stay relaxed in the hip joints. So again, in the lower abdomen on a scale of one to 10, if you're working at your maximum now 10, just allowing that strength to relax back to eight. So here we are with our neutral spine in position, our breath nice and deep and wide, the strength working backside front around the waist and the lower abdomen hollowed. Let's begin to practice for the knee float or knee fold position. And to begin with that, I just work with a little heel release. I think about releasing through the inside of my hip joint to the inside of the knee to the inside of the heel. And as I release my, my feet one after the other away from the floor, I have to, if I'm going to stay in neutral, and if I'm going to keep the weight of my pelvis really as lightly balanced on the floor as possible, I have to gauge how well the core strength is working in the lower abdomen. If I've got enough core strength pulling in at the back of the waist, and if it's really working right down into the sort of bones around the top of the back of my pelvis. Now this sense of releasing the heel eventually works through into the knee float exercise. So that as the leg floats up, the thigh is coming up in an arc shape and going down in an arc shape rather than just a mechanical lift to a right angle at the front of the hip joint back of the knee. But spine nice and long, tailbone to crown, lengthening through hip joint, knee joint, inside heel, float up. And of course, as I'm working, keeping the small of the back away from the mat, the neutral spine position, I can test and gauge with my fingertips on the crests of the hip bones if I'm managing to keep the pelvis really steady. And that will help to tell me if the spine is staying steady because the lower spine passes through the back of the pelvis. Now, a little bit stronger is the double knee float. So again, really stretch and lengthen the spine between the tailbone and the crown, work deep into the broad and wide, scoop and hollow, especially wide, squeeze ribs in, squeeze the waist in, knee float your right leg up. Breathing in here, and then again, renew the core strength, lengthen the spine, and knee float the second leg through. Breathing in up here, breathing out, can let the second leg come down, and then the first leg. So lots of stretch and lengthening through your spine, deep and broad and wide, scoop and hollow, thigh comes up in that floating action, breathing in, breathing out the other leg comes through, still in neutral at the waist, breathing out, lengthen the spine, keep the core really engaged and lower the other leg. 
So what I myself always do is each movement, I renew the lengthening of my spine and I renew the engagement through the core. And in some ways I've got more strength working in the core than I need here, but it's never a bad, bad thing to be training your core strength extra hard because we're going to need that extra strength when we get through to the single leg stretch part of the movement. So again, I lengthen my spine, broad and wide, scoop and hollow, leg floats up. As the second leg comes up, it's quite hard and you might need to just imprint the small of the back into the mat, but keep the belt fastened at the back of the waist. Don't let it stretch, keep it strong. Out breath to lower the second leg and then the first leg. Good, well done. So that's having a look at the knee fold or knee float part of the practice. How about now we look at that head hold with integrated abdominal strength part of the practice. With the head hold, often people find that the weight of the head is quite hard to support and also it makes it difficult to keep the neck aligned. It actually becomes easier to work the head hold when we've got a leg extension going on at the other end of the exercise and we might not need to hold the head then but but we can practice with the head held also. We can bring the hands back to support the weight of the head and as that happens it could be that your ribs flare open so it might be that you need to on your exhalations really keep the base of the ribcage gathering in towards the spine and the floating ribs at the base of the breastbone, the muscles between them working hard to keep them pulled together. So on the exhalation with the single, uh, sorry, with the head hold and the integrated abdominal strength, lengthen the spine tailbone to crown, let the weight of your head really rest into your hands, fasten the belt very firmly into the back of the waist and aim to pull the base of the rib cage very firmly into the spine and work hard between the ribs at the base of the breastbone. So my head is really literally resting into my hands. I can feel that my neck is able to lengthen from between the shoulder blades to the crown. Breathe in up here and breathe out to draw back down again. So breathing in to prepare deep and wide, breathing out to lengthen through the spine, tailbone to crown in the neutral position. Breathe out to squeeze into the back of the waist, work firmly at the base of the rib cage and at the base of the breastbone, breathing in, and breathing out to roll back down. Things that typically happen in the head hold with integrated abdominal strength is that people work into the hip flexors as if we're coming into a traditional abdominal crunch on the gym floor. Really, the, this position is not much about crunching up. It's about aiming to lengthen the waist and the spine right through to the crown of the head, shoulder blades wide and moving down the back. So there really is no need for the hip flexors to work in the depth of the hip joints. The other thing that tends to happen is that as the weight of the head and that come up, the small of the back pops into the mat, which is again typical of the abdominal crunch exercise. So once again, we need that really squeeze into the back of the waist to help support you and work hard here. And it's only really the upper spine that curves upwards. Just trying to keep your shoulder blades wide and releasing down the back. And by all means, let the weight of the head rest into the hands to have a sense of lengthening the spine through. But of course, we can practice the head hold without the arms behind us. And then when that happens, sometimes people really lead from the throat. But think about lengthening through your spine and supporting the weight of the spine into that head, help, head hold position, coming back. So that might be enough practicing on the head hold for the time being. And let's think about the leg extension part of the movement, the single leg stretch part. First of all, we can practice that with the leg press exercise lying on the mat. And that's from the double V position at the legs, sliding first one leg away and then the other leg away. With this movement, I also have begun to work with a heel release. So inside hip, inside knee, heel, and letting the leg release with the inside of the leg, really following the line, the right side of the tailbone. Now the other end of the body, I'm lengthening up from the tailbone to the crown, using my core strength, 
centering my spine really firmly within the core strength. And by centering the spine within the core strength, I mean that the front of the abdomen is working, the sides of the waist are pulling in towards my spine, and the back is pulling in. So it's all around the spine is working. Also in the rib cage, breastbone and spine move together, ribs squeeze in, the shoulder blades and the upper back muscles are working to again center the spine within the core strength. So right in the center of the circular work around it. So if I lengthen the spine, tailbone to crown, pelvic diamond, backside front of waist, backside front of rib cage, neck and shoulders engage, slide the leg through, lengthening inside hip, inside knee heel, breathing in to come back. As the neck extends, it places more leverage here in the midsection. And people often with this sink the hips into the mat. So they drop the weight of the hip into the mat to hold the pelvis stable. Um, it keeps the pelvis stable, but unfortunately doesn't really challenge the core strength that hard. The other thing that happens is that the hips tip away from people. So it's worthwhile just testing that that's not happening. And when your spine is really suspended in the core strength here with both knees bent, think about how much weight you feel passing through the back of the pelvis. And as your leg moves away, keep absorbing the strength that you need into the core strength so that your bone structure through the trunk of your body does not press more firmly into the floor than it did at the start. And when you set that agenda for yourself at the beginning of the movement, you will feel that your core strength has to work really quite hard. So we need to, as the leg keeps moving, weave in some additional small of back, lower back strength, pull up through our gluteal muscles and keep working between the base of the rib cage and the pelvis so that this space as well doesn't open. The ribs and pelvis keep tracking one another and the spine stays long, pelvis and ribs stay on the same alignment. Breathing in to come back. Let's give it one more go. Ribs squeeze in, waist squeezes in, small of back, lower back strength, weaves in, gluteal muscles work, work between the base of the breastbone and the rib cage. Keep the weight really the same and breathing in to come back. So I hope that you could feel the quite profound work in the core muscles in those single leg stretch movements. Let's move into the uh, compound single leg stretch exercise, which is going to be coming back to the knee float position. So the spine really stretched out and lengthened in the neutral, tailbone directed towards the heels, crown of the head actively lengthening in the opposite direction, muscles around the rib cage engaging to the spine, spine through the ribs in contact with the mat, Belt fastening from the back of the waist into the sides into the front. Small of the back though is not in contact with the mat. Broad and wide scoop and hollow in the lower abdomen and just making sure that the hip flexors and gluteal muscles are not working. So with an exhalation, activate the length through the spine, squeeze the ribs in, squeeze the waist in, knee float, the right leg comes up. Let's breathe in here, bring the hands into the back of the head. Breathing out, squeezing the back of the waist around the base of the rib cage between the ribs and the breastbone. Breathing in as you're ready in this position and then breathing out, we're going to slide this leg away. So up here, again, keeping the small of the back in neutral and the pelvis steady. Breathing in to bring the leg back, to bring the head down. Exhalation to float the leg back to the mat and to bring the head back down. So let's breathe in to prepare, length through the spine. Breathe out to renew all of the core strength, ribs, waist, lower abdomen, release hip joint, knee joint, heel. Breathing in again, the hands can come to the back of the head. Exhalation to squeeze the ribs in, squeeze the waist in, let your leg get away from you a little bit, and then let flow up into your head hold. Inhalation, head comes down, knee comes above the hip joint again. Exhalation to bring the leg down, bring the arms back to the sides. Breathing in to prepare, spine lengthens, it's in neutral. Exhalation, ribs, waist, lower abdomen, release the leg into the knee float. Breathing in, hands come to the back of the head. Breathing out, let your legs stretch away from you. Ribs, waist, lower abdomen, smaller back, lower back, head hold comes in. Breathing in, knee comes above the hip, head comes back down, arms come back to the sides, exhalation. Breathing in to prepare long spine. Breathing out core, knee float. Breathing in, head, 
hands to the back of the head. Exhalation, let the ribs work, waist sliding the leg away, head hold, back of waist and base of breastbone muscles there working. Inhalation, head comes back down, head pulls back, exhalation, leg, leg lowers, arms to the sides. So exhalation, knee float, inhalation, hands to the back of the head, exhalation, drive the leg away, add in your head hold, breathing in, head comes down, knee above the hip, exhalation, leg returns to the mat, arms to the sides, breathing in, spine long in the neutral, exhalation, activate your core, float the leg through, inhalation, hands to the back of the head, exhalation, head hold, and extend your leg, breathing in, Head comes back down and lower. So that's one version of the single leg stretch exercise and it's a slightly modified version of the full exercise. We've been preparing for the full exercise so if you feel up to it let's have a look at that one as well. The full single leg stretch exercise moves from out of the double knee float or double knee fold position where we already were and it does feel quite a lot stronger. As you might have noticed, the double knee float exercise feels quite a bit stronger than the single one. So in that neutral spine position between the tailbone and the crown, really feel the core strength centering into your spine. And this will be very key this time. The lower abdomen broad and wide, scoop and hollow, sides of the waist and the back of the waist moving in, sides of the ribs and the muscles in the back of the rib cage moving in, breastbone and spine move together upper back muscles working, shoulder blades wide and driving down the back. So let's release through the inside hip, inside knee heel as we keep stretching the spine in the opposite direction, breathing in. And then once again, stretch the spine and renew the core strength, release through the inside hip, inside knee heel, leg comes up. So we can allow the legs to move towards each other a little bit, not too distant. And then as you're ready, again, we can, with an exhalation, squeeze in at the base of the breastbone and fasten the strength into the back of the waist. So from here, as you're ready, you squeeze the ribs in, squeeze the waist in, weave in your small back, lower back strength, stretch your spine in the opposite direction, stretch your right leg away, breathe in to come back, breathe out, lengthen through the spine, engage the core, stretch through into the left leg, breathe in to come back. Now each time as you stretch the leg, think about inside hip, inside knee, inside heel, and your spine lengthening in the opposite direction. So through like that. And ideally, just bring your knees each time into above the hip joint. Small of the back, stays in the neutral. So you feel the back of your waist working and the spine in the back of the waist is not pressing into the mat. Now you could here, if you preferred, support the weight of the head with the hands. And the last time, Breathing in, breathing out, and let's lower the legs one after the other. Good, <laughs> very well done. So let's just roll around onto the side, pressing up towards the seated position. I think the lower back might need a little bit of a stretch there just to release it, letting the hips as well release out towards the sides, ideally hinging forwards with a nice long spine, a slope, back of hips, back of shoulders, back of head, collarbones still open ideally, and your shoulder blades releasing down the back and breathing in. Good, so let's do one more breath here. And then once again, as you're ready, drawing right back up again. And so that is a close up look at the single leg stretch exercise. I hope that you'll find it helpful and um, understand that that sense of, although we see the movement in the exercise mainly happening in the legs, that there's lots of action in terms of lengthening the spine and coordinating the core strength to take up the different demands that are placed on it as the length of the lever of the leg is changing and exchanging one side with the other. Please write comments and let me know how you get on. Look forward to seeing you again soon on Movement Style. Thanks for watching.